Hi everybody, this is author of The Woman Code and your Club Woman Code Masterclass teacher, Sophia Nelson. Happy New Year. You know, 2018 is coming to a close and 2019 is upon us in just a few days. And I wanted my year in message to my Club Woman Code members and to Woman Code readers worldwide to be something special. And I thought long and hard about what I wanted to talk about. And before I get to my end of year message, I do want you to save the date of January 1st, 2019, because I'm going to be hosting a live masterclass, a live masterclass that you can watch on Facebook, Instagram, and Periscope. They will be at varying times, uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is three hours ahead if you're on the West Coast, and two hours ahead if you're in the Central Zone. We'll have promos out about that on all of my social media channels starting Sunday, December 30th, so make sure you're tuning in and checking in to find out the information it's free it's open to everybody we'll do it early uh, on some of our social media channels so that the East Coast people catch it and then we'll do it again live in the afternoon early evening so that our West Coast people catch it but as I thought about this year 2018 I think it's been a great year actually it's been a good year for me and I'm pleased with 2018 I think it was a, a great year of restoration for me 2017 uh, was a good year but 2018 was a really good year and I'm really looking forward to 2019 because there's something about those odd numbered years in me that work out really well and as I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you and share with us as women I thought I'd do something a little different you're gonna hear a lot about resolutions you're gonna hear a lot about you know what you want to get rid of what you want to keep and all that matters but I have a word for women and I wanted to talk a little bit about my hopes for us as women in 2019 and I'm not doing this with a script you know I don't roll like that I'm doing this from my heart and just kind of talking to you in a very authentic and real way about what I think we as women need to be doing more of in this new year before I get to what I'd like to see for us in 2019 I'd like to say that I think 2018 was a turning point for women globally around the world I think that we found our voices politically socially financially I think that women are really understanding in this time our power and we do have power make sure you understand that power has been given a very negative connotation particularly as it relates to women and that's wrong because power is a God thing power is a God move it's a gift and when you operate in your power and me and mine we're unstoppable you know the whole premise of the woman code is this everything you need to win at life is already inside of you it's not deep it's not mystical it's not magical it's just real you don't need to keep looking outside of yourself for validation you don't need to aspire to be like some other woman or some other person you my sister have power and that power only comes to life when you share your story and you share information and you get past these petty small things that we do to each other as women that really annoy me I'm gonna talk about two things that I hope we do differently in 2019 as women for each other and to each other but 2018 is a year that you need to take a moment over the next couple of days and you need to reflect because in reflection is wisdom in reflection is learning there are lessons, there are things that life brought you in 2018 and taught you in 2018 that you need to do a pause on. You need to hit the pause button and you need to think about it and you need to really pray about it and you need to ask yourself what worked great for you this year and what didn't work at all. You need to ask yourself who's in my circle that's been in my corner, I've been in their corner, we are really for each other and who in my circle is negative and has always got something bad to say and never claps when I win or always seems grumpy and unhappy that person needs to be moved out it's not easy to untie and sometimes we have to cut But I want you to go into 2019 and I want you to pivot I talked about that word in my message earlier this month pivoting if you played basketball in high school and I didn't but I had friends that did the pivots were actually exercises that the athletes did the basketball players did a pivot is simply a a move it's a move the goal is to still get the ball in the basket the goal is to still pass the ball the goal is to still get the rebound the goal is to win but when I pivot 
if this direction isn't working, I got to turn over here. My goal is still the same. My vision is still the same, but I've shifted and I've moved so that I can get to the goal. So keep that word in mind. But here's my word to us as women for 2019. I believe that the only thing stopping women globally, worldwide, regardless of color, regardless of region, regardless of religion, regardless of whatever, socioeconomic status, is us. We are in our own ways. Now, I know there are women who are going to take issue with this and say, Sophia, that's not true. That's not fair. Women still earn less pay. Men are still the heads of corporations. Men still make the rules. That's all true. You know I agree with that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what we do to each other. And I'm going to challenge every woman listening to the sound of my voice right now, including me. I'm going to challenge us to live higher, to do more, to lift as we climb for real, and to cut out the gossip, to cut out the labeling, to cut out the tearing and the ripping and the shredding that we do to each other. We can be vicious. We travel in she-wolf packs. And if I don't like Jane, I'm going to make sure 10 of my girls don't like Jane. Let me tell you something. If you didn't know, you need to understand that your mouth can do a lot of damage. You're labeling another woman, tagging her as uh, difficult or tagging her as crazy or tagging her as this or that can hurt that woman's livelihood. It can hurt that woman's reputation. It can hurt that woman's ability to do the things that she is gifted to do. Just because you fell out with somebody doesn't mean everybody else has to fall out with them. Y'all need to learn how to fight without falling out. I fight with my best friend. I fight with those closest in my circle. We disagree. We go back and forth. Sometimes we get right into each other's face. But we're not going to fall out. We're not going to go and speak ill of each other. We're not going to go and tear each other down. That's not what we're going to do. That's not what my road does. And I want to encourage you to be a part of a tribe, a part of a, a circle of women in your life that celebrate you, that love when you win, that stand up and applaud, that pull you up out of the pit when you fall down. Women that really care, women that are compassionate, women that will come and sit by your bedside when you're sick, women that will listen on the phone to you all night if they need to and come and make you coffee in the morning when you've lost a loved one or your marriage is failing or your kid is not acting right or, or you got a pink slip when everybody knows you are the one holding that company together. Whatever it is, sisters, we are better together. We are better when we're not ripping each other down and tearing each other down. My God, we have enough to fight as women. And women of color have a whole nother set of challenges that are extra to navigate. My hope for us as women in 2019 is that we will lift as we climb, that we will not gossip about each other and not tear each other down, that we will have courageous conversations. I had a conversation just today, and today is Saturday December 29th. I had a conversation today with someone that I'm very close to who I adore. We had fallen out for about four years. We had an argument. It was substantive. It was probably an argument worth having. But at some point I realized, me, I was going to pick up the phone and check on her because I had heard through the grapevine that some things had happened. She was an important person in my life. And I adore her. I think she's one of the most loyal, wonderful friends I could ever have. She made a mistake. And what I found out when we talked today, now we had been corresponding over this past year and getting reacclimated towards one another. But what I found out when we talked today is that I had some misinformation. And that had I not gotten angry like I did because I misunderstood something that was said to me, and had I taken a week and stepped back and simply reapproached her and said, can you tell me what happened here? I would have found out that she made a mistake and that the mistake had been recovered and it wasn't what I thought it was and all was well. And then what happens is when we don't have that courageous conversation quickly, what's in the code? Apologize quickly. Well, having a conversation quickly after a cooling off period is important too because when we can talk about it, not text, not email, 
but talk, audibly talk to each other, sit, have the coffee, go have lunch, invite the person to your home, whatever it is. But when we can have the courage to have that conversation, it heals, it brings us closer. Or in the worst case scenario, we understand we still need to part, but we at least feel better about it because we've dealt with each other with honor, with civility, and with respect. Ladies, we are now going to be responsible for what's going to happen, the condition of not just our country here in America, but with this world globally. I believe what Coretta Scott King once said is true, that if, if America is going to be healed, if the world is going to be healed, women must become the soul of the nation, the soul of the globe. I'm paraphrasing. You can Google it. What a powerful word that is, though. What Dr. King's widow, what Coretta Scott King was saying is this, is that women, we're the soul of humanity. We are the nurturers. We are the caretakers. We are the lovers. We're the healers. Men do those things, too, and we love our men folk. But the truth is there's something magical and amazing about being a woman. And we've got to start believing that. And we've got to start walking in that. And we've got to start helping each other and stop being jealous of each other and envious of each other. My God, if I had a dollar for every woman that was envious and petty and jealous and small in my life, people who I've let stay in my home, people that I've helped to feed their kids, people that I've helped to get a job, people that I've helped from losing a job. I could go on and on and on. Those very people that you help turn on you and stick you and stab you and bite you. And when you find out later down the road why, it was because they wanted to be you or they wanted what you had or they didn't know how to tell you thank you and they felt insecure and so they lashed out at you, whatever it is. I need you guys to understand in 2019 that you're going to have to do the work. If you want a different life, if you want great friends, you're going to have to be a great friend. If you want loyal friends, you're going to have to be loyal. If you want love, you're going to have to give love and walk in love and emanate love. And if you can't do that, it ain't coming back. So my hope for us as women is that we will stop living up to the stereotypes of being catty and it will stop living up to the stereotypes of how mean we are to each other and how petty we are and how we tear each other down. Men actually laugh at us. I don't know if you know that. I've had corporate men tell me they cannot believe the pettiness they see from other women, from picking on a woman's shoes to the way she walks to asking who she might have slept with to get where she is. We're petty and we need to stop it. And my hope for us is that in this age of Me Too, in this age of women's empowerment and women senators and women speakers of the house and women running for president and women astronauts and women corporate CEOs and women billionaires, man, if we haven't learned that we're powerful by now and that I don't lose anything by helping another woman up, we're not ready. We're not ready to lead. Men simply don't participate in this kind of stuff. We can say a lot of things about men. We can say a lot of things that they don't do right that we don't like. But this, they don't do. And we need to stop it. So my message to you, my end of year, to my Woman Code readers, to Club Woman Code members, and to women worldwide is that we in 2019 will do better by each other. That we will stop being envious of each other and start admiring each other. That we will stop being petty and small and jealous towards each other. And we'll applaud that woman who's prettier. We'll applaud that woman who's got a better figure. We'll applaud that woman that's winning the war. We will applaud her. We will celebrate her. Because you know what I've learned? And I can honestly say as guys, as I've never been jealous of another person in my life. Have I looked at another woman and thought, God, she's got a good looking husband? I have. Have I looked at another woman and thought, man, she's blessed. She's got a good family, a good man. I have. But have I ever wanted to take that from that woman or do something to cut her down or be vicious to her? I haven't. And that's real because that's character. And so I'm calling on all of us in 2019 as women to lift another woman as you climb. Open the door, be a mentor, be a sponsor, lift, help, build, speak life to, build up. It doesn't diminish you, it empowers you. When you build a row, a tribe of successful women, you got women that got your back. People don't forget how you made them feel. People don't forget how you treated them. And that's my challenge to all of us in 2019, all of us. Will you be a better woman? 
Will you be a woman that speaks life to other women? Will you be a woman who blesses other women? Will you be a woman who's reciprocal? Women who helped you that when they need you, you're there. Don't not pick up the phone. Don't act like you don't know them. They were there when you needed them. You need to be there for them. We need to remember this. As we go into a new year and we talk about practicing a woman code, we need to practice it and we need to live it. And that's my message to you. As we end this year and go into the next, I'm calling on women to be your sister's keeper, to love your sister, to lift your sister as you climb, to be an ear, to be a friend, to help her and her kids if she's struggling. Prayer is great. But prayer doesn't put food in the belly. The Lord says this. If someone comes to your door and says, I'm hungry and I'm naked, do you say, go off, be well fed and clothed and I'll pray for you? No. You bring them into your house. You feed them. You clothe them. You show compassion. You show kindness. You show love. That's who we're called to be. We are the better of the species. We love our men, but we are the nurturers. We're the caretakers. It doesn't matter how powerful we become, how great we become. We are are the soul and the heartbeat of the nation and of the world. And that's my challenge to all of us in this coming year. Be a better woman. Be a smarter woman. Be a healthier woman. Be a helper. Be a supporter. Be a friend. Be a lifter. Be a builder. God bless you and keep you. I'll see you on New Year's Day. You guys have an amazing New Year's. Everybody be safe. Take care of yourself. And know that the best is yet to come. Bye-bye now.